first of the deadly crashes this week was the worst of them. One of the worst ever. Nine people died in North Las Vegas, seven from the same family. Reporter John Dommel is live at the crash site at Cheyenne and Commerce, and he spoke to the grieving mother about how she'll honor her loved ones. John. Hey guys, I sat down with the mother just a couple of hours ago and you know, she's absolutely overjoyed with the love and support that she's been shown coast to coast and that's the makeshift memorial there at the intersection that continues to grow with each passing day and the plans for the funeral service have been finalized. That GoFundMe had a goal of $150,000 and ended up doubling its target in just days. Erlinda Zacarias lost her entire immediate family in the crash and the youngest being five years old and she couldn't believe how much support the community has shown her. It's so surprising. I see a lot of, a lot of from everywhere, and, and this is, uh, we don't even imagine it's going to happen like that, but uh, to everybody, so thank you for that. And, and we are, we don't have no, you know, way to say something. And there's an honor walk tomorrow at 4 o'clock that'll start at Pecos all the way to Commerce along Cheyenne. And we'll have more details on that public funeral service tonight at 11, though I just got word that it'll be happening on February 19th. And I'll uh, tweet out a few more of those details shortly after this segment right here. Reporting live in North Las Vegas, John Dommel, 13 Action News. John, thank you. Well, double-digit deaths on local roads this week. Our top story is a sobering look at dangerous driving here in Las Vegas. The carnage started Saturday with a crash that killed nine people and the death toll kept rising from there. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears exposes a dangerous combination of more deaths and fewer state troopers. You'd think the January 29th crash that claimed nine lives would give drivers in our community pause cause them to slow down, pay attention, and make better choices on the road. Unfortunately, that message does not seem to have gotten through. This fresh memorial near Windmill and Torrey Pines is a sobering reminder of the reality of driving dangerously. What I want to say to people is, is think about your future. It's never really worth the risk of speeding or driving recklessly um, to get there. Matthew Kaplan is president of the Nevada Police Union. He says speeding might save you a few seconds on a trip. But it could cost your own life or the life of someone else. So it's, it's never, ever worth it. Less than a week after the high-speed crash on Cheyenne and Commerce claimed nine lives, another life was lost. On Thursday, a teen police say was fleeing from school police, ran a red light at Windmill and Torrey Pines, plowing into a red Nissan Sentra at a high rate of speed and killing the Nissan's driver. We spoke to a longtime resident in this neighborhood who tells us a few years back there used to just be a stop sign here at the intersection of Windmill and Torrey Pines. He was hopeful that when the stop light came in, it would curb reckless driving, but says it hasn't made a dent. People still speed every day and often run the red light. Looking back just one day before this South Valley crash takes us to Wednesday, February 2nd. Shortly after 6 a.m. on Boulder Highway, a driver veered off the road, hit a median barrier, then a wall, causing the Ford Focus to flip and killing the driver. A passenger suffered serious injuries. As we've reported, last year was one of the deadliest on Nevada roads with more than 380 people killed. That deadly trend is national. Federal data shows increased auto-related fatalities since the pandemic's onset. Fewer people on the roads meant more room to drive faster, way too fast. There were also more DUIs and police say a near total disregard for safety. But what is uh, being seen besides the high speeds um, is in the cities the uh, the reckless and aggressive driving when uh, a vehicle, a person who's driving a vehicle decides that they need to get through the traffic um, and start making unsafe lane changes, uh, following too close, um, speeding, uh, just committing multiple traffic violations within a very short amount of time. Last Saturday, less than six hours after nine people died in that horrific North Las Vegas crash, Henderson police say Chase Skenendor was involved in a road rage incident where he recklessly went after a motorcycle in his Ford pickup truck that was on Green Valley and Wigwam. He collided with a white Jeep. 
According to police, Scanador appeared heavily inebriated, had trouble keeping his eyes open, and when told to walk to a police car, he had difficulty distinguishing the patrol vehicle with red and blue emergency lights from the white Jeep that was involved. Police add Scanador spit in an officer's face after he was taken into custody. Kaplan says the speeders they catch are just a fraction of the violators on our roads. Nevada Highway Patrol says it's understaffed, and that has a spillover effect. It's clear that if uh, there aren't troopers on the highway stopping problems and uh, addressing issues there, um, those issues uh, eventually leave the highway and the interstate and drive onto the surface streets, and then it is something that a local uh, county or a city agency will have to deal with. The Nevada State Police is recruiting to address the trooper shortage. They need help and they want you. Uh, we highly encourage anybody who has any questions or any desire to get out there and protect their state, the great state of Nevada, to please come on our website, nevadastatepolice.com and, and speak to a recruiter today. But Kaplan says in order for that to succeed, the state's going to have to step up because Nevada State Police, including troopers, make about 50 percent less than city police officers who patrol our local roads. He says that may explain why he's hearing more and more often that you can drive from the California border all the way into Las Vegas without seeing a single trooper on the highway. Darcy Spears, 13 investigates. And our coverage on the North Las Vegas crash continues. We will keep following the latest on the investigation and fallout from the tragedy. Head on over to our website at ktnv.com slash North Las Vegas crash. New video captures a moment a high school student was beaten repeatedly by another student in the classroom. And before we let you see this video for yourself, we want to warn you this may be disturbing. Now parents turn to social media to express their outrage and you can just see right there that classroom student constantly beating down on that other individual. The mother of the three CCSD high school students, Anna Binder, says as any mother would, her immediate reaction was to find out if she was okay. Now she says she can't believe no one helped her and the video shows again that girl who has punched in the head repeatedly and someone in the video who possibly was a teacher tells a student punching to stop while extending her arms to her. But the girl does not stop. Initially, nobody helped her. The, the one student even trying to help um, put very little effort into um, helping her fellow student. After watching that video, I just, I don't know, I feel weird. I was like, oh my God, you know? Like, I was just like, I couldn't watch it no more after that. They, you could hear the punches in the video and how loud they were. And she just didn't stop. Now that attack happened at Las Vegas High School and we call the school and an administrator says they sent an email this Wednesday to address a situation with parents. Now CCSD says in part quote, school administration is aware of the matter and is taking this incident seriously. Now after watching the video, parents are raising concerns about the safety of their students. Yeah, and understandably, that's so concerning. And a person taking that type of pounding could potentially have permanent damage to the brain, no matter the age group. And we spoke with Dr. Brandon Sneed with Nevada Sports and Spine, who says it appears that the student lost consciousness. Once she lost consciousness, we know there was a, a change in her mental function. And then just the additional strikes after that makes everything worse. But uh, there have been plenty of boxers who have been punched in the back of the head and have either passed away or had lifelong changes, traumatic brain injury um, with, you know, a permanent impairment to their function. And Dr. Sneed says the effects from this could be anywhere from difficulty walking or inability to walk or loss of speech function. A full recovery could be possible. Well, we're going to turn it over to 13 First Alert meteorologist Danny Beckstrom. And Danny, as people are getting ready to head out the door to maybe go out to dinner or just enjoy a nice evening, what can they expect? Cool conditions tonight, Abel and Trisha, but we are continuing this warming trend into our weekend, which is good news with all the big events happening. Right now, 52 degrees at Reed International after hitting high 56. We did come in five degrees below normal today with a cool Friday night. 40s already in West Henderson, and we do expect 40s across the board for the valley as we head towards 7, 8 o'clock tonight. So that's what you should dress for if you do have those dinner plans. But no other weather worries. The sky is clear, the wind is calm, so it's just the cold that we expect tonight. Our lows will fall to the 30s again ahead of sunrise 
sunrise tomorrow, but nice to see our highs back near the seasonal average for our Saturday 61. The forecast high by Sunday, we're bumping above normal. And if you think 65 looks mild, wait until you see what we have ahead of us this week. Uh, details on the warming trend that takes us right into next Tuesday and Wednesday coming up in just a few minutes. Danny, thank you so much. Right now, the city of Las Vegas is welcoming the NFL's biggest stars with the marquee takeover. Resorts along the Strip lighting up with signage to welcome the 2022 Pro Bowl to the entertainment capital of the world. And of course, the game is happening this Sunday inside Allegiant Stadium, and the NHL All-Star Game is happening tomorrow. You can watch both right here on Channel 13. And after the games, we will have special edition newscasts tomorrow and Sunday. And Henderson is putting on a big party with the NHL All-Star Game in Southern Nevada. The city closing Water Street between Atlantic Avenue and Basic Road until 11 o'clock tonight for the NHL Street Festival. And this is a live look right now at that festival. Drivers are asked to take alternative routes while the event is happening. While well, celebrating the past and looking forward to the future, Las Vegas is ready to shine with the NHL All-Star Game and the Pro Bowl being held this weekend, and it's bringing fans from all over. That's right, and something to check out is the NHL Black History Tour. 13 Action News sports reporter Tina Wynn joins us from NHL Fanfare to show more on this inspiring museum. Tina. Yeah, hey Trisha and Abel, inside this massive trailer is where you'll find inspiration for generations to come. And it's traveling all across the nation, giving fans a peek at the black players who have shaped hockey history. Past, present, and future. Kwame Mason is on a mission to show you those who brought some soul to the ice. It's dedicated to Willie O'Ree, the first black athlete to play in the National Hockey League in 1958. Inside this massive trailer lies inspiration. You'll find the faces of people who've shaped hockey's history and the reactions of those inspired by it. When you have a, um, a museum like this and you have people coming through to see young girls of color stand here and look at all this is very special because I think that's going to be our future. This museum on wheels travels across the nation, educating fans about the impact of black players in hockey along the way. I always thought that the best way to grow the game, especially in the minority communities, is to make sure that we normalize black faces and voices in the game of hockey, something that's never really been done. So what we're doing is trying to educate people to, to know a little bit more of our history and make sure that our story is just as inclusive as any other story. From Toronto to Nashville, to Detroit and now Las Vegas. Hockey's story is being told in more than two dozen cities and counting. When I go on the tour with the truck and people come and they ask me questions and when they say I didn't know that, that's what's beautiful because you know we're all on this earth to learn and to get something new and to be able to help curate something as powerful as this to teach people something more and new about the game of hockey is going to be always satisfying. And from Val James, Willie O'Ree, and Herb Carnegie, these are three key players who have impacted the game, and you can learn all about them this weekend right here at NHL Fan Fair. Trisha and Abel. All right, Tina, thank you so much. Looks pretty cool. It, we, we, we were both down there yesterday. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Most certainly. It was so much fun to see just everybody and kind of getting ready for this weekend as it's a very big weekend. Two major sporting events right here in the Valley. It's exciting. Well, coming up on 13 Action News Live at 6, shattering glass ceilings in education. How this local black history maker is making a huge difference in our community. And then still ahead at 6.30 tonight, starting an industry here in the Valley, how one Nevada built company help bring in rolling shutters to the Silver State. Welcome back tonight. Well, breaking barriers in the biggest of ways at the highest levels of education. All month long, we're showcasing black history makers. And tonight, reporter Alicia Patillo shows us the woman setting new standards at Nevada State College. I was very struck by uh, Vice President Kamala Harris when she offered her uh, acceptance speech at the Democratic Convention when she talked about the fact that she may be the first, but she won't be the last. And I often think that same thing for me in this role of coming into Nevada. First, she will be hooded with the presidential regalia by her wife, Robin, and her son, Miles. From the south side of Chicago to the president's chair at Nevada State College. Pollard was just a brown-skinned girl from the Midwest with big dreams. Growing up in poverty didn't stop her. 
A strong foundation of community built her, and a devoted father carried her. Resilience became her middle name, and education was at the core. Education was going to be my pathway out, and I struggled. There were points in my academic history when we were trying to figure out what the heck was going on with me, uh, but we stuck with it, persistence, and that was an important part about that. Persistence landed her here. It is my honor to now introduce the eighth president of Nevada State College, Dr. Darian Pollard. Not only as the first permanent black woman president of Nevada State College, but within the Nevada system of higher education. As a result of that, I've committed my life to higher education. I've never left because it found me and saved me in a lot of ways. In her new role, Pollard is taking a pledge for change, building a university of equity and inclusion. That students of color, students who are first generation, students who have had backgrounds that may say that they were not supposed to be here, that they are succeeding at higher levels than you see at other institutions of comparable size and scope. As Pollard takes her seat, she's reminded of those before her who helped make this moment possible. For me, I know that I represent uh, both the present of what Nevada is and also the future. And I want uh, little girls and boys across this country and across the state to be able to say, I can do this. Dr. Pollard is setting a new standard here at Nevada State College, inspiring a new generation of dreamers, a place where all can thrive. I'm Alicia Patillo reporting. What an incredible accomplishment there. Well, you can read more about Dr. Pollard's journey to president of Nevada State College at KTMV.com forward slash Black History Month. Yeah, she certainly is an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up on 13 Action News, securing the bag for a visitor at TI, why one slot machine player and casino personnel did not realize he hit a jackpot. And still ahead at 630, meeting the stars of the NHL. What some Golden Knights are saying about the festivities here in the Valley. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, imagine winning a large jackpot and not even knowing about it. That's what happened to an Arizona man at the TI Hotel and Casino. The Nevada Gaming Control Board says a malfunction on a slot machine prevented Robert Taylor and casino workers from realizing he hit a progressive jackpot. Now, according to the board, it was secured at nearly $230,000 jackpot for the out-of-state players. And man, that is a ton of money. You can do lots of lots with that amount. You sure yeah. can. You know what? We hit the jackpot, though, tonight. We have Abel Garcia on the 6 o'clock news, Danny. <laughs> How lucky are we, Trisha? I know. I love it. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be here. Nice Aww. to have you joining us. And it's even better that it's a Friday night. And we're heading into a big weekend in Las Vegas. And we've got a fantastic forecast. Right now, sitting at 53 degrees in downtown Las Vegas, most of Clark County in the 40s and 50s tonight with a clear sky and much calmer wind than what we dealt with earlier this week. Where the breeze is still noticeable is up and down the Colorado River Valley and gusts 20 to 25 miles per hour continue tomorrow. That'll create choppier conditions on area lakes, but in Las Vegas you won't make uh, you won't notice the breeze making a comeback until Sunday. High pressure that's in control of the forecast for the next several days, so it keeps this warming trend as we move into the start of next week. It will keep us mostly sunny and we're just worried about the breeze moving through on Sunday. Tomorrow, a couple clouds mixing in off and on, especially in the uh, afternoon hours. So we expect a, a band of clouds to drift through, but by Sunday we're back to the clear sunny skies and that's we'll, where we'll stay through the start of next week. Now, hitting a high in 50, of 56 today in Las Vegas means it doesn't take much to cool us off. Tonight, expect cold and calm conditions for your Friday night plans and dress for the 40s. We're dropping to the upper 40s by 7 or 8, and by midnight tonight, we're in the low 40s. We expect uh, overnight lows in the mid-30s ahead of sunrise tomorrow. This is cold. Some of Clark County going to be sub-freezing tonight, like up through Mesquite, uh, Southern Nye County, Pahrump in the mid-20s, same for Prim. But compared to where we started each of the past two mornings, this is actually an improvement. And that warming trend tomorrow, takes us back to average 56 was the high today five below normal but tomorrow low 60s that's right around where we should be this time of year with light wind and a mostly sunny sky just a few of those clouds in in the afternoon of course we have a big weekend here in Las Vegas so I wanted to give you a look at some of the uh, activities going on this weekend tomorrow the NHL all-star game puck drop at noon mid 50s with sunshine by the time that game wraps up we do expect temperatures to warm to the low 60s right on target for the seasonal average no weather worries for your Saturday night plans Sunday the Pro Bowl at Allegiant Stadium kick off at noon temperatures in the low 60s a high of 65 on Sunday but notice that breeze will pick up sustained wind 10 to 15 gusts 25 to 30 so a bit of a breeze for Sunday but no big deal a lot of sunshine 
And then the real uh, warm up happens by the start of next week. Our highs jumping near 70 degrees. That's nine above the seasonal average on Tuesday with sunshine. The last time we were in the 70s, December 5th. We are looking good heading to the next seven days as the sunny skies stick around. That was a check of your 13 first alert forecast. We'll be right back. Taking a look at the numbers on Wall Street, the Dow dropped 21 points, NASDAQ rose 219 points, the S&P 500 is up 23 points, and in local gaming, Boyd rose nearly $4, Caesars is up more than $2, MGM rose more than $1.50, Las Vegas Sands is up $0.28, cents. Wynn rose more than $1, Red Rock Resorts is up $0.83. Cents. Well, next on 13 Action News tonight, live at 630. If you're flying southwest soon, you will notice a change with your in-flight experience. And work hard, learn hard, earn big, and do it all while on a staycation. How you can learn from some of the best in the hospitality industry. Big sports weekend calls for media day for the All-Stars. What some of our very own Golden Knights are saying about the All-Star experience. And the young hockey player also getting a shot to be treated like an all-star. But how much has a youth hockey participation grown? And education, staycation, and experience all in one. How you can learn from some of the best in the hospitality industry. I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Abel Garcia. 13 Action News Live at 6.30 starts right now. Now, 13 Action News at 6.30 on air and streaming live. Big Sports Weekend is here, NFL Pro Bowl, and in less than 24 hours away now from the 2022 NHL All-Star Game, airing right here on KTMP. And to kick things off, Media Day was held this morning inside the Waldorf Astoria. 13 Action News sports reporter Tina Wynn joins us live from the NHL Fan Fair. And Tina, how excited are the players to be here in Las Vegas? Yeah, hey, Abel and Trisha. The guys are more than excited for this one. VGK defenseman Alex Petrangelo mentioned at Media Day earlier today how Vegas is pretty easy to show off, and I got, I got to agree with him on that one. The Vegas Golden Knights will be well represented this week, and Captain Mark Stone will be playing in his first NHL All-Star game. Defenseman Alex Petrangelo will, will be making his third All-Star appearance. You'll also be seeing Pete DeBoer behind the bench as he'll be the coach for the Pacific Division. In addition, the Golden Knights will also have another representative in Jonathan Marsh or so as he was added to the All-Star roster earlier this week. Uh, it's it's incredible. Um, I would name the game here um, it was a year, year and a half ago. Um, I yeah, couldn't wait. I uh, really wanted to be a part of it. I uh, would do anything to be a part of it, um, especially being my first All-Star game, doing it uh, uh, in the best building in the world. Um, you know, with these fans, it's going to be pretty special. You get to kind of show off the city. I mean, it's pretty easy to show Vegas off. Everyone, you know, kind of knows what it is, but you get to really get an appreciation for how much of a hockey, you know, city it's become. And uh, that's the one thing I'm looking forward to people seeing. And another thing the guys have been mentioning is that they're pretty excited to be sleeping in their own beds this week and not having to travel across the country. But hey, no better place to have the All-Star Game and the Pro Bowl right here in Las Vegas. And you can also watch both of those games right here on KTNV. Trisha and Abel. All right, Tina, thank you so much. Well, all weekend long, the Vegas Golden Knights are celebrating youth hockey with several events for boys and girls all across our valley. And our 13 Action News reporter Rachel Moore has lots on what your kids can look forward to this weekend. Well, there already was a solid hockey community here in Las Vegas before the Golden Knights came to the Valley. But since then, youth hockey has exploded, especially among young girls. It's an exciting time for girls hockey and, and a lot of opportunities for them to get in the game and play here. Thursday night, the Vegas Junior Golden Knights stormed City National Arena ahead of NHL All-Star Weekend. The girls skated in a skills competition and even got a video greeting from members of the U.S. Women's Olympic team. In Nevada, youth hockey participation has increased by 200% girls hockey growing the fastest. We're out there now, you're seeing girls out there, you're seeing women coaches out there. Um, with the success of our team on like Instagram pages and Facebook pages, you're seeing girls playing hockey. Having All-Star Weekend here in the Valley solidifies the city's commitment to the sport, ensuring future generations continue its legacy. It just elevates the, the exposure to the game and for the kids, they get to go see the Stanley Cup at, at Fanfare. Uh, they get to watch the, the superstars do their thing in, in a casual atmosphere with their helmets on. 
off uh, and not be so intense and then the, the fun of the game. So I think there's, there's so many different uh, elements uh, to having the, the, for the kids to be able to see their heroes on the ice, whether they're Golden Knights or their other players. Tonight, hundreds of boys and girls will be introduced to hockey at a street ball clinic over at Lifeguard Arena in Henderson. They will also watch the All-Star Skills Competition on the screens there. And then over the weekend, there are several Learn to Skate events scheduled at City National Arena, and all of it wrapping up with a watch party on the video board at Lifeguard Arena. So it should be a lot of fun for families looking to enjoy the big weekend. In studio, Rachel Moore, 13 Action News. Definitely going to be a very busy and exciting weekend. And Danny, I mean, midway through the week, we kind of had lots of winds, very, very yeah. strong winds for the most part. Today was actually quite beautiful out there for, for overall. Yeah, perfect timing heading into the weekend with the big events happening. The wind has settled down, the temperatures are warming up, and we're all good this weekend. Right now, 52 degrees, three warmer than this time yesterday. Not much of a breeze out there, but it will get cold in the next couple of hours. Dress for 40s for your Friday night plans. The wind not contributing to the chill quite as much. The sky stays clear, but after midnight, we're going to drop into the upper 30s with lows in the mid 30s ahead of sunrise tomorrow morning. So the weekend weather headlines calm and cold tonight. Seasonal tomorrow highs jump back to the 60s with sunshine and a few clouds by Sunday. We're back above the seasonal average with the sunny skies holding into the start of next week. The warming trend doesn't stop Sunday. I'll let you know where highs climb by next Tuesday coming up. Danny, thank you. Now to a developing story. A plane makes a hard landing at Reed International Airport. Now you're taking a live look right there at the airport and officials say a Sun Country plane that was en route to Minneapolis had to turn around due to issues with the landing gear. Now this happened around one in the morning and the plane landed right here at Reed International Airport and the landing gear collapsed right after. Now there were 56 people on board. Thank goodness no one was injured and the NTSB says it is monitoring the situation but not investigating at this point. Attention students, if you want to work and live at a casino this summer, you can. Station Casinos announced the return of the internship program. The 12 week internship starts this summer and pays $15 an hour. It also includes meals and housing. The program is happening at Red Rock, Green Valley Ranch and Sunset Station. We have a link to apply on our website at ktnv.com slash links. Honoring heroic donors in our community. Each year, the Nevada Donor Network has hosts a remembrance ceremony to honor each person who passed away during the year and saved lives through donations with their organs. 13 Action News exclusively spoke to Catherine Guyot, the mother of a 15-year-old, Lauren, who passed away from a stroke and was able to save two lives through the donation of her kidneys. She shares what this event means to her and her family. I'm excited, and I'm excited that... Um I can be there for other families and ask them about, about their loved one. And hearing the stories about their family members or their loved ones is uh, healing to me as well. They will help save a life out there. And my daughter's a hero. She saved two lives. And if you would like to become an organ donor, there are two different ways to do so. Next time you're at the DMV, just check yes to the organ donation box or head to the Nevada Donor Network website and you can register there. Well, staying strapped up and safe, why Tesla owners need to listen up about a safety recall. And changes coming for school lunches when this might be rolled in for students. Those stories and more coming right up. Welcome back. Well, if you drive a Tesla 2021 and 2022 Model X, S, 3, and Y, listen up. Tesla is recalling more than 800,000 vehicles due to a faulty seatbelt reminder. The problem is the seatbelt time fails to sound in some Teslas when a driver exits the vehicle while it is ringing and then re-enters. The time is operated by software and they will fix the issue by sending an over-the-air update. This now marks the second time this week Tesla has issued a recall. Well, booze is coming back to Southwest Airlines flights starting February 16th. The airline reduced beverage offerings during the pandemic, only offering some sodas, juice and coffee. But flights will soon have beer, wine and liquor for sale and some more non-alcoholic drinks for free. Southwest says customers can use their 2020 and 2021 drink coupons through this year. 
School lunches will get healthier in the coming years. Starting next year, schools will be allowed to offer flavored low-fat and non-fat milk options. They will also be required to offer more whole grain foods. Sodium levels will remain the same for now, but following year, schools will be required to drop it by 10 percent. Now, school nutrition restrictions were eased during the pandemic and by the previous administration. Well, what goes up must come down. We take a look at a Nevada built company that's keeping homeowners safe one window at a time. Plus, a scarlet and gray doubleheader in AG's territory. What Kruger is saying about how the AGs play their game. For golfers in the Valley who have ever hit a bad shot and were spared breaking a window thanks to shutters on someone's home, you may have a Nevada built company to thank. That's right. Anchor Todd Quinones takes us to the family business that helped start an industry right here in the Valley. What goes up must also come down. That's the basic concept Roll in rolling shutters has been following for 36 years. You lock everything up at the same time. It's the most popular way the customers are operating the shutters. With the remote, we do have manual operations. Bianca Minazzi is gearing up for their busy season as people right now in the valley look for ways to block out the summer sun from their windows and also keep their air conditioning costs down. Obviously, all, these are all cut to order. Correct. Right, Everything's here. custom. We get an order in here. But right now, their back order is some 10 to 